Hi everyone, my name is Tina, also known as Blooming Knitter, and this is Knitting Blooms. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's probably going to be a quick show because I don't have much knitting to show you. But I did have a couple of things I wanted to share with you. And I have a kitty on my lap. <laughs> Sammy is is purring on my lap. I don't know if the camera will pick up her her purrs, but she is purring quite loudly. But I did have a few things that I wanted to share with you this week, and uh, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and record. I was going to just record a double knit tutorial, but like I said, I have a few things to share with you. First off, just to get it out of the way, um, right at the beginning, Sammy is doing well. Um, we did increase his insulin dose just a smidge. We had decreased it down last week um, just a little bit, so we brought it back up a little bit. And he's doing well. He's kind of in a holding pattern right now. We're kind of hoping that he'll just stay on this dose for a couple of weeks, stay in the good numbers for a couple of weeks, and then we might try again to reduce the dose again. We'll see how that goes, but he's doing well. The other very exciting news this week is that we have a um, a family of robins that are living in our backyard in our lattice work. And we noticed the nest a couple of weeks ago, and I went out and saw that there was a nest out there and then I looked inside and there was three eggs. The very next day, Steve went out and looked in the nest and there were four eggs. This was about uh, 13 days ago. And today, they, three of them hatched. There's still one egg that hasn't hatched and we're guessing that that's probably gonna hatch tomorrow because that was at least one day behind. Um, maybe more. I, we don't know how, how long the three had been there. So it's quite fun to watch. And it's, we can look right out our back, um, back door and see the, the nest and see the mama bird and the papa bird. And it's really interesting to watch the different roles of the birds. Steve did a little bit of research and found out that the, the mama bird sits on the eggs. The papa bird does not sit on the eggs. But he does, you know, come to the nest when the mama bird is not there. And just to sit there and watch the two interact with the net, with the eggs and, and now the babies is just so interesting. We can't really see the babies. Steve actually um, kept an eye on them today. And when the mama bird and nobody was in the nest, he ran out there real quick and took a, snapped a quick picture. And, I mean, literally... The, the babies do not even have their eyes open. I have a picture that I can show you. Um, they don't have their eyes open. They aren't very pretty. <laughs> They're not very cute. But um, it's just very cool that, that we can actually see inside the nest. Uh, this evening, just before I sat down, I tried to run out real quick and look because nobody was in the nest. But just as I got almost on top of the nest, I realized that the papa bird was just down the fence a little bit and um, he was getting ready to feed them. So I didn't get any closer. I just ran back inside and watched from the door. And both the mama bird and the papa bird were bringing food back to the nest to feed the babies. So that that is... A, gonna be a lot of fun for the next couple of weeks. I think Steve said that it takes about um, two to three weeks for them to leave the nest. So that'll be fun. And it was even more interesting to see the papa bird before the eggs hatched because when he was on guard duty, he would stand on the edge of the nest and look around and then he'd look down at the at the eggs like something was gonna happen. And then he would look around and then he'd look down at the eggs. It was so cute. And then the protective instincts of the papa bird are just incredible. I had actually put out a, um, like a, a bird meal, uh, a mealworm feeder. Um, I put it right by the nest hoping that they wouldn't have to go very far to find food. But other birds were trying to go to it as well and as soon as another bird tried to go to it papa bird was chasing that bird right out of the way and i'm like okay 
I guess I need to move that feeder. It can't be that close to the nest. So I immediately moved it so it wasn't going to cause conflict or anything like that. And um, I don't know that any of the other birds have gone to it yet. Um, I've been trying to keep an eye on it. I've been trying to put, I put it in an area where I could kind of look in, from the, from the, house and see if there's a bird in it but I haven't seen any birds but I understand that mealworms are supposed to attract um, blue jays and cardinals I think now they did say that robins prefer berries but Steve did also said that they eat mealworms and insects the robins so I'm not real sure if anybody's going to eat them plus they're dried mealworms so I don't even know if that is even good or not. Um, I, I'm going to keep them out there for now and I don't know, we're going to try and see how if we can help the the parents feed those babies somehow. So that has been quite a fun thing to watch. Just, just sitting at the back door watching them. So, very fun. So, this week I have a bit of knitting and a bit of enabling to show you. I did get my special order. I had mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago when I had placed an order uh, from the money that I received from the girls at Knittopia, and I got uh, my order. And this is what I got. I got, I, it's not, I could just take it out of the package. Let me see. It's, it's uh, Twisted Fiber Art. And I got a gradient that I will use to make a, I think it's the sugar maple top. I've been wanting to make this, uh, this sweater for a while and it comes with the gradient that starts at the top and you work down. It's an, it's an asymmetrical, uh, sweater. And then you have the extra pink to go at the bottom. Now I could choose, they asked me which one I wanted at the top and, um, I could choose that. So they did contact me. Oh my gosh, this yarn is so soft. What is this? It's it's um 80% superwash merino cashmere, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It's heavenly. Now, I had originally planned on starting the other sweater that I was going to make with the Anzula yarn, but but because this one's already caked up and it came so quickly, I think I'm going to go ahead and start this one first. I might even start this one this weekend. And um, again, this is the Tasty Base, um, and this is considered the Extra Large Evolution at 750 yards, uh, 7.5 7 ounces uh, of yarn, fingering weight, and it's going to be for the Sugar Maple Top. And there's the gradient. It starts with the teal and then graduates out to the pink. There were some other colors that I really wanted also um, for this sweater, but they were not available currently. So I just decided to go with this colorway because it was available. I could order it now. I didn't have to wait. So that is cool. Um, I also got a sample here, another little sample of Juicy, which is 100% Superwash Merino. This is nice also. I have a feeling that um, I'm going to be a very good customer of Twisted Fiber Hearts. <laughs> so that's awesome. So I probably, you might see this started next week. I'm not sure. I want to start this sweater, and I also want to start the worsted weight cowl thing that I talked about last time. Um, I never really gave you the name, but it is on my it is on my favorites. Um, you can easily find it pretty easily, but you might see it started next week. So that's the enabling that I have to show you. Actually, one of my projects, my other projects, is enabling also. But before I get to that, I'm going to show you uh, my polka dot scarf to, sh to show you how far I've gotten. So here's my polka dot scarf. Here's my stitch marker. You can't really see it all that well on there. Pink. And so I've gotten quite a bit done. I'm, I really am loving this project, actually, and doing it um, with the double knitting and just, it's, it's fun. Here's the other side. So I'm just practicing a lot, and I am going to do a tutorial, probably something very similar to this where I show you how to cast on 
and then do like a polka dot like this. Just a simple pattern. I have to tell you that if, you, if you're doing double knit for the first time, I highly recommend that you do a simple pattern like this, something that you can easily follow uh, because... When I first started it, it was hard for me to to see where I was going because you have all these different all these different colors at the top, half of them um, for one side and half of them for the other, and it's really difficult to get in your brain which one is which. Now, now that I'm this far into it, um, I'm a good I don't know seven or eight inches into it. It makes a lot more sense now, but had I started with something that was a lot more elaborate in the beginning, I think it would have been more difficult. But having a simple project like this, even if you just do something simple like this as like a test swatch before you get into something more elaborate, I'm not saying that you have to do an entire simple project to really understand it. Because like I said, I, mean, I pretty much had the concept you know, within a couple inches. So I could have, if if I didn't want to do this project, I could have just done a little sample swatch and gotten familiar and comfortable with the technique and then moved on to something more elaborate. But I'm really enjoying this. And I try and work on this um, in the evening because it's tiny and I can work on it when Sammy is on my lap because literally I sit down in the evening and I have a blanket that I put on my lap and he immediately wants to sit in my lap. I mean, almost as soon as I sit down, he's sitting on the hassock or the ottoman or whatever, waiting for me to get settled so that he can move on to my lap. And then Crystal isn't too far behind. So that's my uh, polka dot scarf. Um, oh, I do have a... What did I do? I do have a drawing too this week that we'll do in a few moments. Um, I forgot to do it last week. Anyway, uh, so it, the next project I have is started and it's kind of in a holding pattern right now because either I am reading the pattern completely wrong or the pattern really doesn't make sense. I'm not sure which. Now, I'm I'm assuming that it's me that has the problem because I believe that there's like 300 and some other um, projects out there and I scanned them briefly and I didn't see any specific notes on anybody else having problems. So I'm thinking that when I was doing this the other day, I was just not reading the, pro the pattern right and I was confusing myself and so I just put it in a timeout because I was frustrated with it. But I started the Elk Tooth Shawl and here it is so far. I just have the stockinette portion and it's not, it's it's gonna be a small little like kind of scarf a little bit. Um, but the enabling that I wanna show you is the yarn. I had never heard of this company before until they sent a donation to Knittopia. And this is Yarnia. And it is the coolest concept ever. And you can fall deep into the rabbit hole on their website, let me tell you. So you look at this and you're like, a cone? That's weird, you know, it doesn't seem like regular yarn. Well, kind of it isn't. It's like thread that they they have a whole bunch of different colors with a whole bunch of different uh, fiber content and you mix and match and you make your own custom blend yarn. You could have a unique yarn just to you and it can be anything from lace weight, I think, to bulky weight, I'm guessing. Um, but they take these threads, you go to their website and you choose the colors and the fiber content and you put them all together and then they tell you how much it's gonna cost for how many yards. So let's say you need a project that requires 1200 yards and you want something that has cashmere um, 
merino and nylon or something like that. You can mix and match your different strands and make a yarn that is exactly what you want. And it is so cool. You'll see, I don't even know how, honestly, they get it so straight on the bobbin. But this yarn is actually four different strands. There's two of a dark blue color that I believe are merino. Then there's one that's a light blue color. No, like that's more like a teal, a light teal that's I believe merino. And then there's another light, light blue that I believe is the nylon because this is an is a 75% merino, 25% nylon. Oh no, it's 87% wool, 13% nylon. And it's a support weight. But honestly, I went to their website and I seriously fell down the rabbit hole. I haven't purchased anything yet because I'm just so overwhelmed with what they have on their website. But I can see once I do start mixing and matching and everything that it can be an addiction. And I did contact them to ask them how they go about, um, you know, because you don't know what it's going to look like when you match up this color and that color and whatever. And I said, do you send a sample of it? You know, and they said they usually sent, just snap a picture, but if you wanted a small sample, they probably could work that out. And when I say small sample, I mean like a couple inches, just enough so that I can see um, how it's going to look twisted up. But you can see how this looks. Um, you saw it on the in the cone, and this is how it looks in in the fabric. So you get all this variegation because of how the different threads come together, and it is just very very cool. Let me see if I can get a close up of the um, the stitch definition. Let's see if it'll focus. I mean, it's just very very cool. And they made a huge donation to Knittopia. So I, I wanted to specifically point this out so that everybody can go check out their website. Because I just think it is a very cool concept. I've already been picking out pinks. Yep. So, and the fact that you can say, you need, tell them how much, exactly how much yarn that you need, and they can do it exactly there. If you need 350 yards, or you need 400 yards, or you need 1,200 yards, whatever it is, you tell them how much yardage you want, and that's how much you get. You don't have to worry about, oh, this yarn comes in uh, 250 uh, yard skeins, but I only need 535 yards, or something like that. Um... So, it's just, it's a very cool concept. But, I'm doing the Elk Tooth Shawl, and I'm at a standstill, because I'm at the pattern part, and I'm just confused by the pattern. So, like I said, I put it in timeout. If you've done this Elk Tooth Shawl, and you know what I'm supposed to be doing when I get to the pattern section, let me know. I contacted the designer, um, I think it was just yesterday, so I haven't really given her that much time to get back to me, but um, I contacted the designer because I'm just a little confused as to what I'm supposed to do, primarily in between the markers, the two markers at the um, at the bottom, because you have like a, a stockinette section down the center, and then you have these six stitches in the center, and she doesn't, she Mentions the stitch markers on some of the rows, but not on other rows. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I probably just need to read it again when I'm fresh. Maybe Saturday morning when I first get up, I should sit down and read it again. But, yeah. If you know, can you tell me? <laughs> so I don't have to wait for the designer. I mean, I actually tried something, and that's why I have this little bit here that... Um, I had to rip out because I ended up not liking how how I decided I was thinking I was going to do it. Uh, so I ended up ripping it out, and now I'm just kind of waiting. So anyway, that is it. So that's Yarnia. And I definitely think you should go check out their website. Oh, okay, so now we have the drawing for the Mystic Shawls. Um, 
book ebook. Now, I forgot to do this last week, and I went through and actually put all the names in a spreadsheet and was originally going to cut them out and draw it on air. But I sat down to record, and I had not printed it out or cut them out or anything like that. So then I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to do a random number generator and be done with it because I'm kind of lazy today. <laughs> Sorry. I want to get started on my um, my cowl thing, and it seems like this week, every single night this week, something has come up. You know, Monday night, I didn't feel good. Tuesday night, I don't even know what happened Tuesday night. I came home, and I was going to start on it, and then Sammy sat on my lap, and then I didn't want to get up to wind my yarn. And then last night, I worked out, and it... Just before I knew it, it was 8 o'clock, and then I was tired, and I didn't want to get anything started. And So anyway, I'd really like to start my shawl tonight, or my cowl, but I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see. I've been going to bed earlier because I get up a couple times a night to check Sammy's uh, sugar, and that way I still get, you know, almost 8 hours of sleep, even though I've, I've gotten up in the middle of the night. So I've been kind of a little tired. Anyway, so what I did, so what I did was I started a random number generator. I just, what I had, I already had them in a spreadsheet. I didn't have to worry about that. And then I said, okay, I'm just going to do random number generator and pick a number. The number that came up was 18, and that means absolutely nothing to you guys because you don't know how I put them in the spreadsheet. Uh, but the winner was, um, hang on, I took a picture of the spreadsheet because it was Billy, but now I can't remember what the last name was. Hang on. I think it was Billy. Hello, hang on. Oh. Um, I was going to... I just came across the net, the bird's nest. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna show you. Okay, the the uh, winner winner is Billy Castell. So Billy, get in contact with me on YouTube if that's where you are. Um, and I think if you send me, if you're not on Ravelry, you can send me um, your email, or if you are on Ravelry, send me your Ravelry ID. On YouTube or contact me on Ravelry if you are on Ravelry um, and send me your Ravelry ID so that I can have them send you the Mystic Shawls ebook. So again, Billy Castell, that's K E S T E L L, you are the winner of the Mystic Shawls ebook. So congratulations. And I think that's all I have for you this week. It's a very short episode uh, because I didn't have that much to show you. Oh, the lo modern log cabin blanket that I'm working on. I have one row and a bind off to do on the last um, block. I have not decided if I'm going to do a border. I'm tempted to not do the border right now, get the other one completed, and then if I have time to do the border for both of them, I will. Uh, because I'm just nervous that I'm going to run out of time. I don't think the border is absolutely necessary. I'm actually going to go on to Ravelry and look at some of the project pages to see um, if people have the border on it and if I like the border on it, the look of the border better than just um, without the border. And then, then that will kind of help me make my decision. But right now... I am on. I have one row and the cast off. And the only reason that I didn't finish that today was because I figured if I'm going to do the border, then I'm pretty sure that I can just start the border on that one edge because it's one of the long edges without casting off. I mean, it would be crazy for me to cast off all the stitches and then pick them all back up again. That's probably what they want me to do. But I just want to read the instructions. The the pattern that I have been working from is one of the free download patterns, but at the bottom of the pattern it says um, do the border like it's explained on page 75. Well, I have the book. 
I just have to go and look at page 75 to see what the, um, the border encompasses. If it's only like six ridges or something to that effect, I probably will go ahead and do it because I just did this last block, I think I started it either last Friday or Monday. I can't remember if I, which day I started it. So I got it done pretty quickly and it was one of the long edges and it had 18 ridges. <clears throat> so if the, if the border only has like six ridges for each edge, I think I can get it done pretty quickly, you know, so under, probably under two weeks to do the borders. <clears throat> but again, I don't know how long it's going to take me to do the second blanket. So we'll, we'll see. I'm going to check out the information and then make that decision. But anyway, this weekend I am going to be bird watching. <laughs> I'll probably spend a lot of time outside just watching the birds. I might even try and get a quick video, maybe even before I post this uh, episode. So stay tuned right at the end to see if I have a little video for you of the uh, the birds. Because um, I'm going to try and get a little bit of video. I don't think I can get video of the babies, but I might be able to get video of the mama and the papa bird, um, you know, feeding the babies or what have you. So... I hope you guys have a great week. I am looking forward to a fabulous weekend. You guys won't see this until Saturday morning, and it will already be weekend. But I think it's supposed to, the weather here is supposed to be warm but rainy, which is fine if um, you don't need to be outside at all. Yes, it's going to be in the 80s, but a 40 and, excuse me, but a 40 and a 50% chance of rain. I think it's, it's 80% chance tomorrow, then 40% on Saturday and 50% on Sunday and in the mid 80s. So it's going to be warm but rainy. But I could probably sit out in the gazebo or even just sit at the back door and watch the birds. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next week. I hope I'll talk to you next week. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you'll see a tutorial next week. I'm not sure. Um, I did want to mention that more than likely I am going to go to a bi-weekly schedule over the summer. I don't know when that's going to start. It just is going to depend on how much knitting I get done. I might have a tutorial or I might have a regular episode next week. So if you see a tutorial, it means that you won't see me for another week. But I am not going anywhere anytime soon. So have a great week. I hope you are enjoying your spring and enjoying the nicer weather. Uh, and I will talk to you next week. Bye for now. As always, thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Please feel free to contact me with your comments or suggestions, as I am always trying to improve the show. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube as Blooming Knitter. You can also find me on Plurk, Twitter, and Pinterest as Blooming Knitter, but I don't frequent those sites as often. I post show updates on Twitter and Facebook, and sometimes to Google Plus and Plurk. I am Miss Aerobics on MyFitnessPal and Fitbit. You can always find all the old episodes as well as links to the tutorials on the blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And you can also follow the show on Facebook. 
You can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com and show notes can be found at knittingblooms.com.